What's your minimum specification? A few other things came across my path. Um, <clears throat> so the financial call is Bob Swan, the CEO, and George Davis, the CFO. These guys are both finance guys. Bob was a f the former CFO. Um, in the investment call, ever since Murty Renderton Charla left, um, or was forced out, depending on what your view on that is, um, they haven't had an engineer in these, in these finance calls. Um, and ultimately the financial analysts always ask about manufacturing and ability to deliver. And I have no idea why they don't have somebody from the engineering side. Um, was it Anne Kaliha is in charge of manufacturing now? Why isn't, why isn't she there to talk about manufacturing? Um, so points, uh, shipping DG1 for revenue, power on DG2. Mentioned that the DG1 for revenue, no press engagement on that so far. So it's really weird to have that come out in a financial call. Um, spoken about the 30% higher 10 nanometer volumes. Um, one thing I would point out is nobody knows what these volumes are. There's been talk about whether that's, you know, 10,000 wafers, 50,000 wafers, 100,000 wafers. And you've got to wonder, compare that to the 14 nanometer volumes. It still feels like chump change, but Intel won't mention what the volumes are. Um, the, the issue here is when they say that a manufacturing facility is enabled for 10 nanometer or manufacturing 10 nanometer, that doesn't always mean that all of that manufacturing facility is doing 10 nanometer or even they have the capacity for the whole factory to do 10 nanometer. If you have a fact, if you have a fab that does a hundred thousand, that can do a hundred thousand wafers starts per month, but you're only running it at 10% capacity then you're only doing 10,000 wave starts per month. I mean, you can say this production, facility, this production facility is manufacturing wafers, but if it's only at 10% utilization, then you're going to get 10% of the wafers. Um, interesting if Intel would ever divulge the numbers on that. Probably not. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, enterprise and government market segment, 47% year on year again. Um, we've mentioned sale to SK Hynix, buybacks, uh, desktop revenue down 16%. Um, no, but SPs down 7%. Uh, Ice Lake qualification end of year. Uh, well, it, it said hopefully by end of year or expected by end of year. That's not a firm commitment. That's, that's really not great. Um, and then volume ramp shortly after in Q1, um, probably Q1, Q2. Um, they confirmed Sapphire Rapids is sampling in 2020, but actual product will be 2021. Um, Bob Swan, uh, I'm, I said this before, but, um, when it comes to investing in seven nanometer equipment, they'll need, um, need to make a decision early 2021. And, uh, we'll hear more about that on the January call. Um, they said our server roadmap has been consistent for the last 18 months. Not really. I, 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 I can't believe they said that really, to be honest. Um, we'll see how Ice Lake turns out, I guess. Um, and one thing they also said in relation to a question from, um, one of the financial analysts, um, it, it was asked, well, okay, if you move some products to TSMC, how easy is it to move them back? Um, and I can't remember whether it was Bob or George. Again, they're both finance guys. Uh, they said, we feel confident we can port out TSMC or port back in. Now, the processes aren't similar. Uh, the EDA tools are different. Porting essentially means, okay, you know the layout or you know the high level floor plan of what you're designing, but you still need to go at the transistor level and build up your macros and build up your floor plan and then do validation. When they say port, they mean, okay, high level design is done, but high level design, okay, you could be shaving a few months, uh, six months off your full design process but porting in and out just isn't that quick, especially when you're talking to TSMC and you have to put your orders in six, eight, 12, 15 months in advance, especially for leading edge stuff. I mean, is Intel get Intel engaged with TSMC for five nanometer? We've got Apple and Huawei already with their five nanometer chips ready to go. I don't know. It's a tough one. Um, I, I mean, I, I was listening to most of this call and I was going through the slides as they were talking and perhaps a few of you saw me on Twitter with a few others going back and forth about what this actually means for Intel. 
I mean, they're saying they beat expectations, but the expectations weren't rosy to begin with. And I think things like enterprise and government down 47%. That's pretty substantial. Saying things like um, uh, data-centric revenue down 10%. That's substantial. Yeah, over, okay, overall revenue is higher and you got your share buybacks and you sold your NAND. It's... I didn't... F- Two things I want from Intel in the future, in, in the future, which isn't coming across at all in these sorts of uh, presentations. One, the ability to be humble, to acknowledge mistakes, but also, you know, identify strengths and use the synergy between those as a promotional aspect moving forward. And second is just a, an element of sincerity, honesty, truthness, and accuracy with some of these expected product launch windows. Um, acknowledge the fact that Ice Lake is delayed. Acknowledge the fact that you said Aurora would be delivered in 2020 and now it's 2021. Acknowledge these things. It's part, it's part, it's, Intel has been in the lead for so long. Um, despite, you know, record revenue growing, beating expectations. Markets reacting the way they have done in the last two calls. There needs to be some, some attitude change there. And a lot of people will point to the fact that there needs to be a more senior engineer on these calls, explaining the details, knowing the details, knowing the ins and outs, being able to talk technical with the team, whether that's in relation to, um, process or packaging or fundamental aspects about intel's product portfolio uh when you know speak to what's happening in mobileye versus habana versus uh the exaltera versus optane yeah you know you didn't, didn't mention optane four layer technology or uh, question about optane you know okay so r d is going on in rio rancho but where's the manufacturing going to come what's the relationship with How's the relationship with Micron going on that front? Yeah. Um, Intel's a big company. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I, like, like we covered right at the start of this video, 15,000 software engineers. That's more software engineers than AMD has employees flat. So, or even leveraging the software positive points and, you know, sales of software and whether that's growing and, Applicability to the HPC market or the server, server virtualization market or the hyperscalers. I mean, the hyperscaler that was mentioned in this presentation was Oracle. No mention of Google, Microsoft, Tencent. Yeah. Okay. That's where we stand. Um, yeah. Interesting to hear what they have to say January and then obviously what Intel's competitors are going to say through the rest of the year. Um, You've been watching Tech Tech Potato. Sorry, this has been a long one. Um, lots to talk about, really. Um, click the potato if you want to subscribe. It should be over here somewhere. Um, and uh, what's your minimum specification? <laughs>